Welcome back to The Authentic Christian. My name's Aaron, this is Tucker, this is Scott, and today we're going to talk about what if you're the only Christian where you are. All right, so in today's episode, we're going to discuss the idea of what if you're the only Christian where you are. We're not talking about if you're Tom Hanks on a deserted island, all right, and Castaway. We're talking about maybe you're the only Christian in your family. Maybe you're the only Christian where you work. Uh, maybe you're a college student and you're in the dorm and you just got to college and you want to be a faithful Christian, but there's just a lot of uh, stuff going on in the college dorm because I was a college student that shouldn't mm-hmm. be going on, right? Um, wherever you are in your life, whether you're a teenager and you're in high school and you're like Tucker, who what they call you guys? The, uh, the God Squad. The God Squad, which that was a term of sort of persecution for him in high school, which we're like, wow, that's kind we of a compliment. We thought about making t-shirts, though, but yeah. you know, we never did. So you have that all the way up through somebody. Maybe you're, uh, I mean, maybe you're in a retirement community and you're trying to live a Christian life and everybody's like, why don't you come and party with us? Like, you know, I, I guess retirement communities have parties too, right? So I guess so. We're, Bingo party, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably stereotypes. So, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, all we're saying is no matter where you are in life, you might be, you might find yourself in the situation where you're the only Christian, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm laughing about Scott. Yeah. So how do you respond, right? We yeah. sometimes, I was talking with somebody the other day on the phone. Was it one of you guys? Talking about peer pressure sermons? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I don't think it was We've one of you. We've talked about that subject. I don't think I was on the phone with you. Yeah. I was talking with somebody on the phone maybe two days ago, hmm. and um, they were talking about how we always have peer pressure sermons for younger kids, you know, teenagers and, and college age students and youth groups. But we never talk about it for adults, really. Yeah. And it's just as powerful for adults. Really, you're going to encounter peer pressure until you die. Yeah. 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 And, and so, go ahead, Tucker. I was going to say, it didn't, doesn't just disappear. It might no. be even stronger in some scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And so, um, I mean, what is what are some of the principles that we see in the Bible about, you know, I guess morality? Is it is the right thing always the right thing? Or can, there's a song I heard recently, which I was listening to, and I was enjoying it, and then all of a sudden I heard the lyrics, and it was like, it was like, sometimes wrong is right. That's what it was. And I was like, Nope, that's not right. <laughs> God creates things that are morally right, right? And so our morals are based off of obviously what the Bible says. Yeah. So what should somebody look to whenever um, they're dealing with peer pressure? Yeah, I mean, obviously we'd want to just say, go back to scripture and everything. Um, one of the verses I actually pointed out for another episode, but never got to use it, is 1 Corinthians 15 um, in verse 58. Mm-hmm. It's uh, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, like, maybe you are, you're feeling alone, you're working at the grocery store, and you're stocking shelves, and you're seeing all different kind of people. But, like, I like it says, be immovable. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, just keep, you know, hanging tight to the scripture, and you're not alone. That's mm-hmm. great. You got the church. Yeah. You got other Christians. Well, and it's like, go ahead, Scott. I was going to say, same chapter, you were talking about, um, who, who's around you in the way mm-hmm. that it can affect you. That's verse 33. Yeah. Be not deceived. Evil companionships corrupt good morals. So anyway, yeah. I was thinking about that just a second ago. Sorry to throw that. No, I mean, those are That's both, good. those are both perfect because it's saying number one, be careful. You know, the point you're bringing up is, well, let's put them two together. Tucker's basically saying like, imagine you're a rock in the middle of a river, right? Yeah, big rock. And you're this rock, but you've got God right next to you. And the yeah. river is just the world raging by you and, and around you mm-hmm. trying to get you to go with them. And you're saying, no, I'm not going to move. I mean, that's for, uh, that's steadfast and immovable. And you've got Scott saying, look, the people that you surround yourself with are going to basically influence, they're going to influence you if they're bad friends they're going to influence you for bad they're going to wear wear you down yeah right they're going to be the ones that are always tempting you to do stuff Mm -hmm. that you don't want to do well you told us uh what's that verse in exodus about yeah you know so exodus 23 2 i think it is thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil yeah i always tell my wife i'm going to make that a bumper sticker when i'm up in memphis on 240 (laughs) and like speed limits 55 and everybody's going like 90 by me you know and i'm like (laughs) this guy probably going to cause a wreck in the right lane yeah yeah well that's (laughs) psalm one right yeah that's right Yeah, I mean, so basically we don't follow. I mean, let's go to Psalm 1. Let's go read that. But thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Just because something is what the majority is doing doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. And a lot of times, especially in our world today, normally if the majority is, the majority is almost always wrong. I mean, is that not true? I can't think of very many things. I mean, with, with social issues, with, you know, different things that, 
yeah. the, the world is fighting about, normally the majority is wrong. Yeah, typically, when you're talking about morals, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I mean, what, we, we read that that's going to be the case in uh, the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Most people are going to end up being lost. Yeah, Matthew seven fourteen talks yeah. about the way that is leading to salvation is what? Narrow. Wide and every No, oh, narrow. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. no, you're right. I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's narrow. The yeah. way to salvation is narrow. Why? The road to destruction, it's wide. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. Many go in there at. Yeah. Hebrews yeah. 11, sin is pleasurable. And people think, well, it's fun. It is. If anyone says sin's not pleasurable, you haven't read Hebrews 11. Mm-hmm. And that's what mm-hmm. Moses said. Look, instead of enjoying those passing pleasures of sin, he said, no, he's going to look to the reward. You think of Noah, eight people, the rest of the world <laughs> turned against God. Yeah. People say, wow, that's narrow. Yeah, have you read the story in Genesis 6 of Noah and the ark? Yeah. Yeah, if, yeah. if yeah, I mean, I know that he's not, <laughs> you're not talking about a Christian when you're talking about Noah. Because no, of course not. Christianity Different covenant. didn't exist. But child you're talking of God, about just though. Child of God, faithful yeah. individual. That's probably the closest that you can get to mm-hmm. being the only Christian. That's right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, in the not, world. Yeah, no, yeah, like I said, not literally <laughs> Christian, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Follower of God. Mm-hmm. So Psalm 1, uh, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That idea of be careful who you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. Um, I know when I was in high school, I wanted to fr- <clears throat> surround myself with the coolest kids, right? I wanted to be a part of that in crowd. That in crowd was a lot of times the ones who were um, encouraging me to do wrong things. I still remember I was in 10th grade photography class when I won't say his name in case he watches, but one of the most popular kids was sitting literally surrounding me with a group of girls saying, hey, just say a cuss word. Just say a cuss word. Like, Talk about peer pressure. He's literally saying, hey, say it, say it, say it, you know? And so you're going to be in those situations. And the only way that you can resist this, number one, is to flee from it. Mm -hmm. It's like sexual immorality, 1 Corinthians 6.18, which is literally what what Joseph did in Potiphar's with Potiphar's wife. Run from it. Don't put yourself in those bad situations. You put yourself in those bad situations, and eventually you're going to get burned, right? So don't do that. Don't surround yourself with, with bad company. But I mean, what did Jesus, what are, what is, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in Matthew chapter four, he's, he faces temptation. How does he respond? He fleed from it. Yeah. And how did he do that? With what? With scripture. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. By quoting scripture. Yeah. So he's Satan. resisting. Yeah. He's fleeing from that temptation. And the way he does it is with scripture. Yeah. I mean, you look at, he's tempted three different times. That's right. And he quotes scripture all three times. Yeah. By, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, well, someone submitted this. In this topic into us. So yeah. like, Hey, thanks for submitting that because yeah. we know it's hard, you know, going through life as a Christian. Yeah. Um, one, one quote I'd heard from someone is like, maybe you're the only Jesus where you are. So like the person that submitted this in, maybe you're the only Jesus, the, the people that you're around, your family or friends, coworkers, like maybe you're the only like light that they can see right now. So and it's kind of yeah. like, what's the, the husband and wife or the yeah, first Peter three, you were talking about that, yeah. like, the, the wife can lead the husband back to the Lord or, uh, by the conduct, yeah. Yeah, First uh, Peter 3 is where that is. Yeah. First Peter 3, 1 says, Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. Okay, wives, be submissive to your own husbands. doesn't mean my wife's not submissive to Tucker. Mm-hmm. She's not his mm-hmm. wife, all right? That even if some do not obey the word. So you have a, a woman who's a Christian and a husband who's not, doesn't obey the word. They, without a word, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. So the idea is, look, you have a woman who's a Christian, husband mm-hmm. who's not, and the woman is, by the way she conducts herself, lives her life, shows that godly mm-hmm. character, that husband is like, something different about her. Maybe, I, yeah. maybe why, don't I, why, why don't I have that sort of peace and joy in my life? And mm-hmm. it leads you, you're basically, like you said, you're teaching her. What, yeah. Well, it seems it's almost just as powerful. She's not. teaching him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so like, book, chapter, and verse knowing that is just as important as also living out the book chapter and verse. Like it's just as important to love someone as it is to know the scripture. It's the two go together and they're not separate. Yeah. Yeah. And it's keep your morals and be consistent with it. Right. Yeah. uh, Matthew five 44 talks about loving your enemies, Mm -hmm. loving those that persecute. But but I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for them that persecute you. Uh, we got to be consistent with our faith. Even if we are the only one there in that relationship or in that setting or in that family or that Mm -hmm. workplace, whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. we have to be consistent with it because, that's that's part of how we're going to be able to win others over. Yeah. I mean, you think about the Bible says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And kind of what Tucker is saying is like, the devil quoted scripture when he when he tempted Jesus. He quoted scripture. Mm-hmm. You can know scripture. I can tell you a book, chapter, and a verse, but if I'm my life, I just, I know what it says, but I completely just go the other direction. It's really not, it's kind of worthless to me. You know, you, you don't want to be a hearer only. James talks about that, but a doer. Yeah. 
So like I need to know, number one, I do need to know where it is in the Bible. Yeah. Now, you know what? Memorizing scripture, it's not going to come as easy to everybody. It takes time. Yeah. It's taken me a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of years of repeating it. But what happens is sometimes I won't remember where a verse is, but I know the principle. I know the Bible says it. Yeah. Now, normally I can get on Google and find it. And over time, you're going to be better at that. But you want to know what the Bible says so that whenever temptation comes at you, that you can respond with scripture. You may not quote it at the people, you know. Yeah. Someone may not say, hey, here's a drink of alcohol, and you say, get behind me, Satan, Matthew 16, what, 19, 20? <laughs> no, you might scare them a little no, bit. No, you, <laughs> might, you <laughs> might scare them. Actually, like, maybe you okay. should try that, because yeah. that they might actually not want to hang out with you anymore, and then you just got rid of that so, bad influence. Stay away from that guy. Yeah, but but you want to, to try to remember what the Bible says so that you can fight that temptation. I mean, that's what Jesus did. He's perfect yeah. example. Well, let's yeah. say you're living in your hometown where you're, and you're supposed to, you would think, you know, small town, everybody, you know, everybody knows everybody. If I go to Walmart, people are going to see me, but we talked about this off the podcast, but like John four forty four, that even Jesus's hometown rejected him. And like, you think, you know, in today's world, you think your hometown, they have your back, you know, it's just football and, you know, everybody's got your back, but you know, even Jesus hometown rejected him. Sometimes the people that reject you are the ones you wouldn't think would. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for instance, Jesus' family didn't believe in him for a long time. I mean, later you see that they did, but his mother and his brothers don't, which, I, I don't know, it, it confuses me how his mother couldn't believe in him after all she saw. Maybe she did, but she just wasn't as active in it. But, I mean, the Bible talks many times about the division that Jesus can bring, even in a yeah. family, right? Yeah. Think about this. You'd think, well, the God, Jesus could never divide up a family. I mean, the Bible talks about that all the time. It talks about how basically Jesus would divide up a family. I mean, if I go to Matthew, I think it's chapter 10. Uh, let me see if it's 10. Yeah, 10, 34 through 39. This is Jesus. Do not think I came... This is what Jesus said. If you've never heard this verse before, this is Jesus speaking. Matthew 10, 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Well, wait a minute, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus never said anything harsh, did he? Verse 35. I've come to set a man against his father, daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He that loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, Jesus is not saying that you can't have a good relationship with your family, right? He's not saying that. What he's saying is sometimes you're a Christian in your family, and your other members aren't of the family aren't Christians, and they might persecute you for it. They may mock you, make fun of you, belittle you. Yeah, he's saying that a lot of people are going to have to make a choice. Yep. And those who choose to follow after him are necessarily going to make enemies of those who are opposed. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times you don't get that friction today, at least here for us. But uh, it still does happen. There's, there's, there's stories that we've heard when I was going through preaching school and I know of other people. Uh, they're out doing regular pulpit ministry or whatever you want to call that. And they'll have somebody who converts but their family ostracizes them mm -hmm. they'll kick them out mm -hmm. they won't have anything to do with them they'll get hateful letters or phone calls or whatever the case may be that still happens yeah it still separates families in that sense yeah. because you are the fact that you're willing to commit to doing the right thing and start speaking the right thing and doing the right thing it necessarily condemns them for not doing it yeah. not you you're not the one going and saying oh you're going to hell not that way of condemning them but uh, you're, you're shedding forth the light that is exposing the faults in them, and yeah. they don't like that a lot of no. times. I mean, the, the Jesus talked about basically how people love darkness. Non-Christians, evil. I mean, now, I'm mm. not trying to say if you're that's, watching this. That's exactly right. We're yeah. the light of the world. We're the a light of the world. A lot of people love darkness, so yeah. they hate it yeah. when you shine that light. Well, second, flip to First Peter 4. I want to read First Peter 4. But while you guys are flipping to First Peter 4, I want to read Second Corinthians. I think it's Second Corinthians chapter 3. I take a lot of chances sometimes thinking, hey, I hope I'm going to the right passage. Uh, okay, it was, oh, it's chapter 2. It's just on the page of verse. I can remember stuff where it's literally on the page of my Bible. But <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, listen to this. Verse uh, 14. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses, I'm talking about Christians, the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Listen to how it calls Christians what fragrance, like what we smell like. You ever smell a candle and you're like, Oh man, that smells good. My <laughs> wife loves Candle Day, Bath and Body Works, like before Christmas, where you buy like one, get one free, right? Mm -hmm. So every year we're like, we're buying as many candles. We got as a you flannel can. one out there if you okay, want. Flannels are good. Yeah. I like flannel. <laughs> so anyway, I love a good candle. There are some candles I'm walking through that store and I'm like, yeah. Oh, I would. You couldn't pay me to light that in my house. <laughs> Verse 15. 
For we, 2 Corinthians 2.15, for we, Christians, are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and those among those who are perishing. To the one, those who are being saved, we are the aroma, no, to those who are perishing, Christians smell like the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other, aroma of life leading to life. Christians, you're going to smell like death figuratively to some people in the world wow. who you stand for something that they hate. Yeah. And you might be persecuted for that, but just know that's going to happen. Jesus said that. If they persecuted Jesus, he was a perfect preacher. What's going to happen to you whenever you live out your Christian life? Uh, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And when, and when it happens. Cause he, he explicitly said that different yeah, times. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, and like it's going to happen. Someone is going to – they're going to walk away from you. Uh, and when that happens, I think it's important to just to be in remembrance of uh, – Rob Whitaker once said, like, when that happens – just to keep loving them. Yeah. Um, I mean, because that might be the, like he kind of said, it might be the only Jesus they ever see. Yeah. So whenever they hate you or mock you or, you know, try to delete you from your life, just keep loving them. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Show them you have to respond differently than the mm -hmm. other yeah. side. If someone is a, a non-Christian and they go really aggressively and they yeah. make fun and mock and even threaten, what does a normal person respond? They respond back the same way. Proverbs says a soft answer does what? Turns away wrath. Yeah. yeah. When somebody comes at you angry or persecutes you and you just respond and say, okay, I love you. Yeah, you you've know? got to think about, and that's the challenge for a Christian, you have to think of ways of how you can bless that person yeah. who's wanting to punch you in the face. Or maybe yeah. they did. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Yeah. That's your job as a mm -hmm. Christian. Yeah. Love, love your enemies. Bless those that persecute you. Mm -hmm. Along the same line, a wife that has an unbelieving husband might be having a hard time, but mm -hmm. she's going to win him mm -hmm. by her conduct. Yeah, which means it needs to be different than his. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing the same thing, you're not winning anybody. Yeah, you're on their side. That's you right. Win him over to your side. Which That's means right. It needs to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Go to First Peter four. I already told you guys that, right? Yeah, okay. we're there. First Peter four. Um, I was going to ask Tucker to read. You want to read it? Yeah. I'm can good. I interrupt you when I get a? Yeah, that's okay. totally fine. You can do it. Whatever. Start in verse uh, 1 and read through, like we're going to read through verse 4. They're ba it's basically talking okay. about you become a Christian. You yeah. don't live the same lifestyle you used to. When the word Gentiles is used here, I'm a Gentile. I'm a non-Jew. But it's used this in the fact of Gentiles is referencing non-Christians and Jews are Christians. Hmm. Okay. Galatians 6, 16, spiritual Israel. We are the Israel of God. Okay, so that's kind of the, what he's using here. So start in verse 1. And he's going to be talking about when you become a Christian, you don't live the same life. Yeah. And your friends, the old friends, are going to make fun of you and say, why don't you run with us like you used to, right? Go yeah, ahead. all right. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Jesus suffered. You're mm -hmm. going to suffer the same way. First Peter, I think, talks about suffering 16 times. So you're yeah. going to suffer being a Christian. All right, keep going. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, reveries, drinking parties, and uh, abdominal idolatries. Abominable. Abdo <laughs> abdominal. <idolatry>. Abdominal. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first, guys. That's it. <laughs> not your stomach, idolatries. Um, in regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Of uh, dispensation, speaking evil of you. You read the rest. Okay. <laughs> so he basically saying all these things you used to be a part of before you became a Christian, in regard to these they, who, your old yeah. friends, they think it's strange you don't run with them in the same flood of dissipation. Okay, I mean, the word dissipation means breaking apart. It's like yeah. basically you're not causing chaos like you used to. Speaking evil of you, when you don't run with your friends like you used to, are they going to say, you know, Tucker, I really, yeah. I really love the way you've changed. Most of them won't say, They'll Tucker. They'll probably say, what, why'd what's you turn on me? You? Yeah. yeah. And normally when you are living your life one way and other people are living a different way and they look at you and they notice a difference, there's either two responses normally. They'll say, huh, like why are you doing that? And they might, re they might recognize it and respect it, and that might be a person that you can show the gospel to. Then there's the other one who normally sometimes will get angry. You know, like I remember people growing up, I never drank alcohol in high school or college. And um, I remember guys like that I played baseball with who would ask me why I didn't drink, and they didn't really care why I didn't drink until they found out it was because I was a Christian, and then they were like hostile, you know. And I, I don't, I think sometimes people see you doing that's, something. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, that light shining, uh, yeah, shining, it, revealing that darkness there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's yeah. what it was. Your your choice to not drink condemned their choice to drink. Yeah, because it was based upon a moral precept. Yeah. 
and I always tried to I mean still be loving and nice and kind to them. And yeah. there were many times where guys on the baseball team would call me at two in the morning and say, Hey man. And I'm like, don't try, you know, like, but I would try to talk to him about it, you know, but, yeah. um, Bruce, uh, Bruce Hatcher, an awesome preacher and friend of mine said by seeing the invisible, we can do the incredible. And so like maybe by you saying no, maybe that, that effect of them getting that response maybe changes their way of thinking the butterfly effect or something, you know, just yeah. maybe by your example of choosing to do the right thing for the Lord, maybe, maybe it helps them. They think of it late that night and they're like, you know, so maybe the things we we're doing and living out, maybe we, we don't really see it, but maybe behind closed walls, like it's actually doing something hopefully in Providence. Maybe yeah. I'm trying to go to John one where Jesus talks about Jesus. Um, it says verse 10, he was in the world. Okay. Jesus, uh, the world was made through him. Jesus made the world, and the world did not know him. He came to his own. He came to his own creation, and those people did not receive him, right? It talks about why. Um, oh, where is it in chapter 1? Where it talks about they didn't like the truth. They didn't like the light. Um, John bore witness. He who comes after me is preferred before me. Well, I'm not going to know where it is. In, I got so many notes in John 1. <laughs> and um, Okay, here we go, verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it, overcome it. Okay, so the Bible talks about light. Being the teaching, John God's 3, teaching. 19. John three nineteen, not one. I got so many notes in John chapter one. John three nineteen, uh, and this is the condemnation: the light has come into the world. Well, who's the light? Jesus. Obviously, yeah. Jesus, yeah. right? And his teaching. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today. You're going to be at different places in your life where you're trying to be the light. I mean, what, what does Matthew 5 say, Tucker? We're supposed to be what? Start in verse 11. Let's read Matthew 5, 11 through oh, okay. 16. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Because it talks about persecution and being a light in the exact, like right back to back, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 11. So it talks about persecution and how we're supposed to respond, and we're supposed to be a light, and it exposes the darkness, and some people don't like that. That's why they killed Jesus. Yeah, they hate it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kind of evil evil against you for for against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So when you're persecuted, you're supposed to do what? Rejoice. Doesn't that seem sort of counterintuitive? It's kind of backwards, it seems like. I mean, that's like in what, Acts? For what reason, though? Go ahead. You yeah. finish. You know, I'm going to look great up. Great is your reward in heaven. That's right. Yeah. Right. So whenever you're persecuted, you're supposed to rejoice, you know, because, number one, you're experiencing the same thing Jesus experienced. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's Matthew 10. The disciple's not above his master. That's right. Or the servant above his Lord, and he's, he goes on to describe that, it's enough for you to be as your master. And he talks about, that's the that's the passage mm-hmm. where a few verses later, uh, Matthew 10, 28, he says, Fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill, but uh, are able to kill the soul, but rather fear, uh, not able to kill the soul, rather, I'm, I'm mixing my words up here, yeah. mm-hmm. but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So yeah. anyway. Well, here, I was looking in Acts 5, see if I could find it. Acts 5, 40, this is whenever Gamaliel says, look, if these guys, the apostles you arrested are from God, you can't fight against it. So they let him go, right? But they didn't let him go before beating him. Acts 540, they agreed with him, I think Gamaliel, when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, okay, probably 39 lashes from Deuteronomy 25, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They beat him, said, don't you speak anymore about Jesus and let him go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Yeah. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching. So, I mean, later in chapter 6 and verse 7, you see that even some of the priests obeyed. So they said, we're going to beat you. Don't you talk about Jesus anymore? And they go, okay. And they, leave. they don't agree to it. They yeah. leave, and they rejoice. I don't know why I had this idea of them skipping. That's probably not accurate. But, like, how else? Maybe dancing, jumping, yeah. because they just they were rejoicing. When you think of rejoicing, what do you think about somebody, like, excited, right, yeah. for getting beaten? I don't know. In this kind of situation, um, maybe they weren't doing it here and then, but it reminds me of uh, singing. Yeah. Maybe that's how they're rejoicing. If any is, what is it? How's it go? If any is sorrowful or whatever, let him pray. Let him pray. Any. Happy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Acts 16, they're in prison yeah. and they're doing what? San- Acts, oh, yeah. Acts 16, I'm they're sure in singing. prison and they're singing hymns. Mm-hmm. I mean, is that what you do if you got put into prison? Probably wouldn't be my first thought. No. 
you'd be thinking like, oh man, I can't believe I'm in prison and they're over here singing like hymns. And yeah. look what happens. There's a, now don't expect that to happen today. There's going to be an <laughs> earthquake. But the Philippian jailer, he asked him, what must I do to be saved? Well, why? Number one, they were probably preaching in the city, which they were obviously from the previous verses. But also they've been singing hymns. Who knows what they were singing? Mm-hmm. They are probably singing about their hope, their salvation, whatever type of hymns they're singing. And the Philippian jailer's like, man, I need some of that in my life. Yeah. You know, it was like those people that saw you and your wife are like, why are you guys so happy? <laughs> we were at a hibachi restaurant and this guy, <laughs> I'm not going to tell the full the story because yeah. I don't know how appropriate is what yeah. he said to us. But basically me and Jamie was after church, mate, it was a Friday night. It was a Friday night before we had our little girl. So just us two on a date and we're at this hibachi restaurant and we were just so happy. We were asking this guy how he is. And he actually made a reference and said, are you guys, he asked if we were on something. And I said, what? And he said, are you? on something i said are you asking me if i'm under the influence of like something like and he's like, he's like oh i'm so sorry yeah dr-. and that's what he said he asked if we were on drugs i said no he's yeah. like are you? i was like i'm just we're just happy like we're thankful which is we're gonna talk in another episode but like yeah. like what you should just a christian you should be a happy person you know you have your sins forgiven now some people are happier than others obviously you can tell i'm an animated person but we should be thankful we should be happy that we yeah have salvation, even if we're the only person in our area or in our work or our family, if we're the only Christian there, you know, you might be able, think about this. Sometimes people will say, you know, I'm the only Christian in my family. I'm the only Christian where I work or my friends group. Right now you are. You don't know what the future holds. Yeah. You, the gospel is God's power to save, Romans 1.16. Mm-hmm. You don't know if in 10 years you're looking back and your entire family's Christians. Why? Because you took the first step. Yeah. yeah. You if know? you do what is right, that might be the future. You're more likely to get that result. If you remember those things and you keep being consistent, yeah. you keep doing the right thing, you keep showing the right attitude, then, That's right. Uh, if you give in. And yeah. if you don't have a support structure as an individual Christian, there's mm-hmm. a problem because God set up an organization, what? The to church. The, the church. Yeah. I know lots of people who are members of the church, the only ones in their family, but they have a new family. Mm-hmm. They have a spiritual family yeah. that will support them in everything they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. we got about 45 seconds left. If there's somebody sitting out there who's the only Christian where they are, what would you say to encourage them? Um, I'd say keep doing what you're doing, keep living for Jesus. And when you're fishing, sometimes you have to change bait, and sometimes fishing takes a while. Mm-hmm. So, and sometimes you don't catch anything for a long time. Yeah, and then you catch a monster. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Well, even when times get tough, remember what the big picture is, mm-hmm. and remember that this life is going to be pretty short for all of us in the grand scheme of things. So right. keep your eyes focused on heaven. Make that your goal, and uh, yeah. no matter what happens. As long as you got that in your mind, uh, you'll be able to push through. You'll be able to keep going, keep on going. That's right. Matthew five eleven. Great is your reward where? Yeah, in heaven. In heaven. Great, yeah. guys. Good job. Yeah. Thank you for watching the Authentic Christian Podcast, and we hope that you'll catch us back on the next episode. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to and uh, start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is. Thanks for listening.